So I'm recording the Runcam Eagle 69 on my Field World monitor. The second stream is the Foxier 1189, which is being recorded on the FedTrack Dominator module. I have two video transmitters and they separated channel 1 and channel 6. This is the monitor, goggles, and my dual cam installation. Foxia 1189 with 16 by 9 This is the Runcam Eagle 169 version with an immersion RC video transmitter here and the Quantum Elite here for the Runcam. Okay, for some strange reason the Black Sniper won't take off, won't fly. Since the light is nice, I will just do a comparison with these two cams on the copter and record this and hope we see something. I have the Yi cam on the copter, so you get my audio and the visuals. And I'm wearing the Fat Sharks with the HS1188. And the colors in bright midday, overcast, cloudy, sunny conditions are really cool. Totally flyable. You see, if looking directly into the sky, of course you don't see the sun there, but it's a good mixture of brown shadows and bright lit sky. So let's head to the darker cardboard area here. Well, this, <laughs> this remote walking style, <laughs> it's funny, actually it's funny. All the time totally flyable. I think one one problem though with the Runcam wide dynamic range, I think it introduces a lot of latency. I will check this on my bench later if uh, wide dynamic range is turned off, if it's uh, faster latency one. Light behind the trees. Yeah, that's actually a nice setup here. So we have shadow areas here and in the comparison with the wide dynamic range from the Runcam Eagle this this whole part would will look definitely better than on the HS1189 but now I'm wearing the 1189 then even here it looks totally fine now that's actually a totally fine picture Okay, the colors are astonishing. I mean, these red, yellow, blue colors. I, I think I have all of the settings on defaults on both cams. Light change test. Very bright, dark. One, two, yeah, one or two seconds. Adjust the light. Okay. It's not super fast, but it's okay. Super bright and shadow. Yeah. <laughs> Run cam definitely magic HDR colors. I mean, they call it wide dynamic range, but it looks like these uh, high dynamic range pictures. And this all in one, so it's definitely impressive colors here. We only have to check the latency on the bench. Here on the new port, I have the HS1177 with a GoPro 3 cheap lens replacement. So I just take a quick look with the HS1177 in the sky. It's somewhere in between. It really looks good to check out the shadows. And uh, it's not the most convenient or the most good looking uh, latency test. But if you move the head, 
it really feels natural, it feels good. So now doing the same test with the Runcam All Plus, which is installed in my Vortex. And yeah, it's definitely, it's flyable, but if you look up, you have nice skies, dark, the light areas. Yeah. Here you see some of the disadvantages of just CMOS. But again, latency-wise, it feels okay to walk around with it and look around. So, no latency. And if you just have dark areas, like in this carport, it's totally fine. You see all the details. You could even fly... Yeah. If you want to fly through this gap here, you now see the problem. It, the colors get washed out. And you can't actually judge where you're going or what obstacles might be there. So, yeah, I think this is a good test here showing you that it's not the best cam for daylight flying. Okay, so tested both of them. This is the Run Cam All Plus, and this is the old HS1177. So let's go back to the hangar, to the bench and check all the latencies and do some more comparisons. Okay, so here's my latency setup, this uh, video feedback loop. Each instance of these images sums up the latency. So between all those fingers you see a few milliseconds of delay. We can also show this with time code on the mobile phone. But it's, it's better actually to just measure the time from this green button to get red. So let's just record a few seconds. Okay, so this was the latency of the Runcam Eagle. Let's make a quick run through the menu options. The most important thing is the image. You have 3D noise reduction. White dynamic range on and off, this is the most important feature of course. White dynamic range on looks just awesome. Under image enhancements you have sharpness, saturation, ah, it's best to leave all in auto. Get mirror, brightness, yeah and you can zoom in as well because we have such a high resolution here. Then there is this day and night setting where it switches to black and white if it's too low light. Video standard is PAL or NTSC. Yeah, it seems like Chinese and English. Can okay, load defaults, you see the version I'm on. And you can save and exit. Let's check out the Fox here, HS1189. And you instantly see that all my fingers move almost at the same time. That means we have lower latency on this cam. We will also see this turning red to green time here. And I can check the menu for you guys. It's exposure. Brightness to middle. To shutter mode. I leave it to auto, automatic gain control, on or off. Okay, in on it tries to see something in the dark, as we see here. I'll leave it to on and middle. White balance, image adjustment. Yeah, these are the standard settings. You can crank it up a bit here. HD noise reduction and 3D noise reduction. Contrast, saturation, red, green and blue gains. You can change the color if you want to. And we have this system. Well, quite a lot of settings. Bad pixel, privacy mask. It will highlight the, the over bright 
parts of the video with black. Uh, don't know what this is for. Next screen, we can mirror. Okay. Okay, so here we have the Runcam All Plus. And it actually looks like a good latency value. And we will check it out with the green button test. So this should be the reference of what's latency. It looks like some delay as well. It will be interesting to see if the HS1177 here is slower than the 1189, which would be awesome. Because here I can see some difference between my finger movements. And now check the green to red time. This is a short optical comparison between those two. On the optical side, of course, the run cam with its bright orange winds and with its nice eagle logo. The Fox here is just black. Both cams have their cables on the top. If you have up tilt, the cables shouldn't touch the ground, so that's a nice trend. As you can see, the run cam has an additional cable for the nice and high quality menu joystick. On the Fox here you have the green is menu, video black is minus and red is plus. And you can loop it through this control part or you directly connect it to just the video cable which has one lead less. The mounting hardware is quite similar, maybe the run cams is a bit better because it has this scale on the side where you see the angle you use. That's a nice plus. Uh, build quality looks a bit higher on the run cam. I think this this is aluminum or metal. This is plastic. I think the HS1189 does really good job, although it's an CMOS cam. It looks almost as good as the 1177. So this could be... I'm not sure if the 1189 also has a 4x3 version, which would I prefer, of course. But yeah, the, the new Foxio cam looks really cool. And I, I heard that there's also an 1190 uh, successor to the 1177. So yeah, the Foxio cam's really nice. Color-wise and with the white dynamic range thing, the run cam eagle just blew me away today. It, it really looks awesome. So if you can live with a bit higher of latency as this looks, then you really get the best colors out there and you really get uh, some of one of the viewers said he thinks the run cam looks like x-ray vision in the shadows. That, that's really amazing. So yeah, definitely nice cam. Thanks to Runcam for sending me this sample for the review. And even more thanks to the guy who sent me this Foxeer HS1189, because this wasn't sent by Foxeer or Surveilzone or some company, this was sent by Chase, hi Chase and thanks a lot, who just wanted to support RC Shim. So thanks to my fans that start sending me stuff. Also, to conclude uh, my thoughts on the 16x9 cams, they are definitely fine if you use 16x9 screens or, for example, Dominate uh, version 3, which was 16x9. This way you fill the whole screen, which is what you want. I didn't have enough time today to test different influences or, or the color or the, 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 the picture quality of different lenses. I mean, I can tell you I have, I have enough lenses. Remember, if the lens should have this red coating, the infrared filter, or if the chip is infrared filtered, check this out on the cams. The run cam has to have the IR filter on the lens, not on the chip. For the Fox here, it's the other way around. The Fox here has the IR filter on the chip. So just remember this, if you have the IR filter on the chip and additionally on the lens, that doesn't seem to matter, maybe it degrades the quality a bit. If you have to have it on the lens and you don't have it, you get weird colors. Just keep this in mind, but once you've tried it, you've seen those only just green and blue colors, then 
you're doing something wrong with the infrared filter. Okay, so that's really it. Thanks for watching. Thanks again, Chase, for sending me the fox here. See you soon. Bye.